crank up the mast. Bye. 100 pound goggles, there they are, all up there, spying in the wind. Welcome back to the channel guys, hope everyone's good. Yeah, my hair looks a little bit darker, the girlfriend's a hairdresser so she's been experimenting, giving me a little bit of a tint. Get rid of those greys, you know? Anyway, enough of that. Today, we're doing an experiment. So this guys is my FPV truck. It's a Traxxas Summit, it's got a DJI FPV system in it. Now those of you who've been following the channel, you'll know that I started getting into FPV cars it's just such a cool thing, so cool, just being able to remotely control um, a car with a long range radio system and long range video link back to uh, back to the goggles. You can basically just go and send this thing off on little missions and just have a right old laugh with it. So whilst this setup is absolutely amazing, you know, you can stream back HD video into the goggles and record what's on the goggles and actually use it in a YouTube video because it's that high quality. But it's not without its drawbacks. This system runs on 5.8 gigahertz, so it's actually really subject to blocking if you go behind trees. And basically it needs the best line of sight you can get, either standing on top of a hill or going to the top floor of a, you know, block of flats and then controlling the car from up there. That is how you're going to get really good range. So the experiment I want to do today is I want to put my goggles as high as possible. So basically this is the thing, these are the goggles that are receiving the signal. And what I'm going to try and do is stick them on my massive mast outside and crank it right up. And so, you know, it's going to have a really good line of sight. And then we'll drive the car around the neighbourhood and just see exactly how that kind of improves the range or not. <laughs> so yeah, I've not done this sort of thing before. I want to kind of make a proper antenna system for these goggles, but it's expensive because you need to use high grade coax, low loss coax, and you know, you're going to need to figure out this, the antenna system on here, which is super complicated. Like this, this system is state of the art guys. It really is. When you start looking into it and finding out, you know, how it actually works, it's like, yeah, it's proper state of the art, 50 megabits downlink for video, you know, not using the internet or anything. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go outside, strap these to the top of the pole <laughs> and go for a little burn. Batteries are charging. All fire safe precautions being taken place here, guys. I think we just use duct tape. 600 quid goggles strapped to a massive mast and it's windy outside using duct tape. Good idea. Right, so here's the mast, guys. It looks like a right mess. It's got a load of wire around it. It's got another antenna on the top of it. Take that off, actually. It's done screwed up. Right, I need to protect these lenses from the sunlight, really. So I'm just going to stick that in there. Fold that in there nicely. There we go, nice elegant solution. <laughs> I can even rotate, this is supposed to be omnidirectional, but I can even rotate the pole to you know, position it in the right angle. So all we need to do now is plug the battery in, hit record, stick the mast as high as it goes, and we'll be good to go. Perfect timing. One of these batteries is always lower than the others. That's not good. Right, I've got the DJI battery here. Stick that in my pocket. Let's get the car going. Just don't blimmin' rain. Get the battery in there. Another one in there. Crossfire module on. Just need to fire up the DJI air unit. But that plug there plugs into that little 18650 battery pack, which is 21700s actually. Strap the battery to the pole as well. Right, it's all on, everything's on. I just need to turn the car on so we can hit record on here. And then, um, yeah, I'll just crank it up and we'll take the car out for a rip. Curbster is a bad boy though, isn't he? Look at him. How do I know if that's recording or not? Right, definitely heard a beat then. Let's crank up the mast. Bye, 600 pound goggles. There they are, all up there, spying in the wind. Right, okay, now obviously I should be able to overlay the video from the goggles, um, the recording from the goggles into here. So, so let's head off out. So yeah, I sort of know roughly where this cuts out, but we'll see. <laughs> it's got some beans. Now I have to walk, catch up with him. It's a shame these goggles haven't got like a HDMI out. I mean, you can do it with USB-C, but it's just a ball ache because you can't really have a very long USB-C cable, not as long as that mast anyway. If it had some sort of like video out, you could actually sort of do this from inside and see, but there's no other way of doing it. <laughs> There's a lot of obstacles in the way here guys, like a lot, I mean houses, 
all sorts of stuff. And obviously being lower down, the, um, the antennas are right down on the ground almost. So, you know, you're fighting all sorts of battles with microwaves, microwave signals. Jeez, what's that? So, okay, so we'll put brush this in you soon. We've got to do it, a bit of racing. Right, so I'm just gonna basically just go up here into the woods and um, go up the top of the top of the hill there. The problem with the goggles is they just they basically just like stop recording if they lose a signal. So there's not really any way of like doing it. You know, you can't restart the recording, which is gonna be a bit of a pain. Right, I need to cross over here. That's all right, he's turning in there. Straight up the curb. Now, I'd be surprised if we can get a signal where I'm about to go and we'll see how far it actually gets. <laughs> It'd be so cool. It'd be so cool if it did actually reach this far. Um, I've got a feeling that mast is probably still not high enough. Uh, but we'll see. Right, so we're at the top of this kind of this hill up here. I don't think it's gonna get much further than this to be honest, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna carry on going till I can't see the car. Just can't be bothered to walk anymore. And just see, just in case it is by some miracle chance has got reception. Oh, I can't see it. <laughs> oh, I'm spinning around now. Put the brakes on, wow, look at that slide up the mud. The summit is so good, I love the summit, it's brilliant. It's obviously faster and probably more stronger cars now. This is an old car, but you know, it's awesome, awesome bit of kit. Right, let's head back then and check the footage. All right, let's get the goggles down and have a look. Right, it's still recording guys, I'll just take them off, it's still recording. Right guys, I'm just looking back at the footage this is impressive. This is actually, I mean, you're not going to do this. There's no way you do this on the ground level. We're talking cars here. So total distance was probably only about, I don't know, half a kilometre. But it's what you've got in between that. I mean, half a kilometre, nearly half a kilometre. That's pretty damn good. So you can see how I stuck the overlays on. So look, 20.7 megabits. This is entering the woods. Obviously, you know, look how many trees there are. You know, it's obviously not leaves on them at the moment. Um, but we're sort of, you know, going up this hill and we're getting 20.7, we're getting 35 milliseconds latency. But look at the quality of the image. This is where this is a bit deceiving. Signal's one, but, you know, I've, I've heard that that is actually on the on the sort of low end side anyway. Um, but yeah, and you know, as we go into the woods there, we sort of get up, um, you know, still maintaining 21 megabits there. It even goes up to like 27 briefly, look. Um, and then, you know, as, as we sort of move forward, this is when you start to get the break up as you sort of go into the woods. There's a, it actually kind of dips down a bit um, as well. So that's probably what's affecting that. And then we actually end up kind of, you know, going further down, you can see it's starting to block. Now what DJI system does is it blocks at the edges. So it, it kind of prioritizes this um, center field of view, which is pretty cool. So you can see the edges are really blocked. The center is not so much as, you know, the further you get in, you know, and this is actually 3.6 megabits. So, you know, that is, that's doing pretty good. And then you start to get to the point where you see your delay, your latency just goes out of control, 100 milliseconds up there. Um, and then it kind of, at one point, it just goes up, goes off to, off the scale, um, you know, and then the video sort of like stutters and then, you know, speeds, speeds up like it's trying to catch up. But, you know, as a first test, that is pretty good. I would say that's impressive. You know, if you've got a bit of knowledge about radio, you'll understand that this this is hard to do. This is not an easy thing. It's like, oh, you know, why can't it just go, you know, 10 kilometers, no problem. It's not gonna happen. We're fighting against physics here. We've got a car that's low down, you know, little antennas sticking up. You can't really put anything massive on the car because it's, you know, to get the antenna height. We, we're running on extremely high frequencies as well. So, you know, the loss, the path loss, the, the distortion, the reflections from bouncing off of buildings, the DJI system has a lot of technology built in to kind of, you know, um, counteract this. They use a thing called cyclic delay diversity, which is basically, because you've got four antennas on the goggles, um, basically, 
you know, it's sending different signals at different times. And it, this goggle can actually request a packet to be resent, you know, if it's lost. It's clever stuff, guys. Um, but you do need those four antennas on there. So this is what I wanted to do. Before I start messing around with antennas with this, you know, external antennas, I wanted to just see what it worked like, you know, as it's supposed to be used. Kind of, you know, just put the goggle up super high. We can actually go higher as well. I've actually got another mask I could put on top, so I might try that and just see, you know, but, but it makes a difference. Height is might absolutely at these frequencies. Like, you know, you just need to have line of sight. If we can get this up even higher, we should be able to cover, you know, at least one kilometre is around, you know, in a, in a radius. You know, it's never easy to get reliable radio coverage because again, you've got all these obstacles, you've got signals bouncing off here and there. The DJI system will compensate for that, of course, but yeah, it can get a bit tricky, especially if you sort of go over a hill, down the other side, and terrain really comes into play here as well. So there's everything, everything is basically fighting, you know, fighting this. So there you go, guys, some interesting tests, which actually I hadn't, I was searching around on YouTube and I was trying to find, you know, other videos showing um, ground-based vehicles with the DJI system, and there wasn't really anything else. Bags and bags of range tests for like, um, the aerial stuff and the drone stuff, but nothing really on ground-based stuff. So hopefully this is gonna be of use to some of you guys out there. And it's again, it's just interesting how these hobbies kind of all overlap. Radio, RC cars, you know, high-speed downlinks and, you know, cameras. It's, it's, all, it's all interesting, well, it is to me at least. Anyway, guys, catch you in the next one.